Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now recently I was out game hunting with my buddy, the immortal John Hancock, and we noticed that the price of original Xbox games is starting to go up a bit, which got us thinking that it might be a good time to do a video where we recommend some original Xbox games that are really fun to play that you can still get for around $20 or less. So that's what we're gonna do in this video and I think you're gonna love it. Let's take a look. By the way, not every one of these games is gonna be exclusive to the original Xbox, but often they run there better than say the PlayStation 2 or the GameCube. The first game I wanna talk about is one I initially saw the cover and was like, man, this game looks bad. It's called Battle Engine Aquila, and yeah, that cover is not doing it any favors. However, the game is surprisingly good. So you play a guy who is a pilot for this experimental battle engine that has the ability to fight both on land and in the air at the push of a button. Basically, you are transforming all the time. You'll take to the air to shoot down some flying enemies, but then you'll quickly land and then you'll fight some tanks or take on some foot soldiers. It's a really cool idea and surprisingly well designed. Honestly, you can see that some care was put into the making of this game and it runs really well on the Xbox too. And I like how this game doesn't overstay its welcome either. You can beat the game in about six hours, at least on the initial difficulty setting. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is yes, a hidden gem. Now the good news is it's not exclusive to the Xbox. You can also play it on the PlayStation 2 and the PC. And the prices for the Xbox version are kind of all over the place. Some of them go a little bit higher than $20. Some of them are like around $10. What I will say is that you can save some money by getting the European version, which by the way, I think actually has a better cover anyways. Don't let this game slip you by if you like these kind of games. It's way better than you think. Hey, get your hands off me, you idiots. What the hell did I do? Calm down. Nobody means you any harm. Hook? This is Commander Kramer. He'll tell you what's going on. He better before someone here gets hurt. Believe me, I'm no more happy about this than you are. Next up is a game I'm very excited to talk about. That is PsyOps The Mindgate Conspiracy. In this game, you play as Nick, who is a commander that's trying to fight a military uprising. And its whole gimmick is that you have these psionic powers and you need to use them to fight the bad guys and stop the movement that is enslaving your comrades. Basically, this game feels like a mix of Splinter Cell and Star Wars. Think Sam Fisher style stealth gameplay, but then you mix in Jedi mind powers. You have powers like telekinesis, which allows you to move objects and people. You also have the ability to astro project through doors into rooms and you can kind of see what's happening before you actually walk in. You also get the ability to siphon mental energy from people to replenish your psi powers. And then you'll later on get the ability to pyrokinesis, full mind control, it's really cool. I think the one caveat about this game is that the controls are kind of weird and definitely takes some time getting used to, but the game has a really good tutorial that you'll want to pay attention to when you first start it. The game is really well made and really unique for the time and it runs great on the original Xbox. I love this game. Oh yeah, here's a game I'm very excited to talk about. This is Blood Wake and this is an early launch title for the original Xbox that is kind of forgotten now. Basically, this is a story-driven naval combat game where you drive this watercraft around, just blowing up enemies, shooting targets, and completing missions. I read once that the developers were trying to make a game that felt like twisted metal on water, and that is a very good description of this. I remember at the time thinking how amazing the water and boat physics felt, and I would say for the most part, they still hold up even today, all these decades later. You know, the developer of this game, Stormfront Studios, has created a bunch of really excellent games over the year, many of them actually D&D &D games. They made games like Neverwinter Nights and Demon Stone, which may explain why this game just goes a little bit deeper than you might expect. It's a pretty cool game that is exclusive to the Xbox, and it can usually be found for less than $10.
Next up is MX and ATV Unleashed. Now here's the deal. There are a bunch of motorcycle, dirt bike racing games on the original Xbox, but the ones made by Rainbow Studios are the best in my opinion. This developer is probably gonna sound familiar if you are fans of my channel because they created the truly excellent Splashdown Rides Gone Wild game that I show in almost all of my intros. You guys know I love that game and you can really feel the DNA of that game in this one. These games are a nice mix of arcade racing with just enough realism to be fun. And this game runs like butter on the Xbox too. If you aren't familiar with these games, it's all about learning the tracks and the bumps and the turns that you'll encounter. But also preloading your springs to control how much jump you get, which then can lead into a really great trick system. It's kind of that risk versus reward thing that works so well in franchises like Tony Hawk and SSX. These are really fantastic arcade racing games. If you like motocross or ATV arcade games, these are excellent and yes, they're very cheap. Here's another cheap game I'm very excited to talk about that is Metal Arms Glitch in the System. Here's a fantastic third person platforming shooting game that really reminds me of Ratchet and Clank where the majority of this game you're exploring 3D environments and you're just shooting lots and lots of bad guys. This game takes place on a robot world where you are part of a rebel group that's trying to push back and defeat these other bad robots. And I have to say that just like Ratchet and Clank and some of the other games in this genre, this does feel like a AAA title as well. It has great graphics, has really fun, well-written characters. And as you see here, things blow up real good. Now that said, I do think this is not quite as polished or as timeless as Ratchet and Clank, but it is dang close. I also appreciate that this game does not always hold your hand. It's kind of shocking when you first play it because you'll be like, where do I go next? And so it really does emphasize just exploring the environment to figure out what to do. It's funny because in so many modern games, you're just led to the next objective. And this one definitely kind of just lets you wander around for a while, which I learned to appreciate. This is a really fun game. I mean, way better than you might think because so few people talk about it, but definitely give it a chance. Here's another arcade racing game I was very excited to talk about. It is Quantum Redshift. This is Microsoft's answer to Wipeout on the PlayStation, and I have to say, it's a very good game. However, that may not be that surprising when you learn that many of the developers that worked on Wipeout also worked on this game to bring it to the original Xbox. This game takes place in the future and has you piloting these hovercrafts, and just like in Wipeout, you pick up power-ups that either will help you take out enemies with weapons, or maybe it'll give you shields to deploy if an incoming missile is coming in, or some of them will just give you extra points. There is a great sense of speed here and the graphics are really good. You can tell it was made specifically for the original Xbox. And again, just like Wipeout, the controls work really well as well. This is just a really rock solid arcade racing game. And again, exclusive to the original Xbox and it's dirt cheap. Here's Kingdom Under Fire, The Crusaders, and this was an Xbox exclusive as well. And at the time, there was nothing quite like it. Basically, it's a mix of a real-time strategy game, but it also has kind of the Dynasty Warriors real-time combat, plus it has RPG elements, and there's a fairly in-depth story. You play the leader of a troop of soldiers, guiding them around the battlefield from one encounter to the next. Once you get close enough to the enemy, the action zooms in and then you control just the hero of the game. Melee combat includes heavy and light attacks and then blocking as well, but then you also have the ability to summon friends over. If you get yourself in a jam, they'll, they'll come over and do a big special attack that maybe will clear out a bunch of the enemy. And your goal as the hero is to try to find and defeat the enemy leader to hopefully help turn the tide of the battle in your favor. If you can tell by the gameplay footage here, this is a pretty intense game that has some really fun and interesting combat. This is a really cool game that most people don't talk about and it's cheap. 
Here's a game that's a total surprise. It's called Full Spectrum Warrior, and it was developed by Pandemic Studios. Do they sound familiar? Well, they should because they also made Star Wars Battlefront, Destroy All Humans, Mercenaries, and a bunch more games. And what's hilarious is that this is really nothing quite like those games. Maybe there's a little bit of DNA there, but basically this is a squad-based tactical shooter that has more in common with SOCOM on the PlayStation 2. And I love SOCOM, but I'll be honest, this game is even more hardcore. To give you an idea, there is an in-depth tutorial that is no lie, it'll take you up to an hour to complete. You're gonna learn all the tactics that you'll need to just survive this game. And good luck if you wanna skip that, because like I said, this game is very realistic, at least for the time. This game is all about taking your time, planning your routes, understanding cover and using the environment to keep your soldiers alive, at least hopefully. It's a very cool game, but it's not going to be for everybody. But like I said, if you give it time, if you go through that tutorial, it can be incredibly satisfying. It's it's really fun. Roger that, Charlie 90. Lieutenant Chapman here. I'm Delta 4-0. On station and eyes wide to paint your targets. Over. And then here's a game that is absolutely not that hardcore, not that realistic, and that is Brute Force. So in this game, you control a squad of up to four characters and you fly around the galaxy acting almost like the police force for the entire government. And each mission is kind of unique in that you'll fly in and land on a planet, and then you'll either rescue somebody or take out a bunch of terrorists or maybe stop a rebellion. And you can switch between any of the four characters at will. Each of them have their own weapons and special ability. For instance, the crocodile dude here can see heat signatures, which will make it much easier to see enemies. This character here focuses on stealth and invisibility, plus she has a sniper rifle. And then the main character is kind of a meathead like Tank, and he can dish out a lot of damage, but also take it. I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of a brainless third person shooting game, but you know, it's surprisingly well made. This is the type of game where Paul and I would hang out on a Saturday night, maybe drink too much beer, get stupid, and just looking for something fun where we can just go in and blow some stuff up. Mutants in this sector have been terrorizing the locals. If you are up to the challenge, you should try to take them all out. Full lethal force for this op has been approved. So there you go, guys. That was nine original Xbox games that you can typically get for $20 or less. And maybe you noticed that I tried to keep the list of games a little bit more interesting, maybe dig a little bit deeper into some hidden gems. Because at the end of the day, there are a bunch of games that came out on the Xbox that are still relatively cheap. If I was to do a follow-up video, I would love to know what games you would recommend down in the comments below. And at the end here, I want to thank the Greater Seattle Area Retro Gamers Group on Facebook, specifically Young, who helped me get copies of these games for this video. There were two games that I swear I had in my collection, but over the years, I couldn't find anymore. So. Thank you very much, Young, for helping with that. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.